Welcome to Holtz Academy's Rhino 3D for Jewelry Manufacturing tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll talk about a few of the topics we cover in our short course here at Holtz Academy. In particular, how Rhino can be used in the jewelry design and manufacturing processes. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how you go about building a full eternity ring using basic solid modeling and transformation commands in Rhino. The eternity ring is one of those shapes which is pretty much always in demand from a CAD designer as it's usually quickly, consistently made in CAD faster than it would be by hand, once you know how. So to start with, uh, we really can't make a ring without knowing the stones and the size of the ring itself, so we'll make ourselves a stone here. Easiest way to make a stone, if you don't have the kind of software we need for making uh, stones automatically, such as Rhino Jewel or Rhino Gold, we just make one and use the revolve command to do so. I'm going to use the polyline tool in the front viewport here. I'll make sure the grid snap is on right now. And I'll draw a basic shape of the stone. I'm not too fussed about sizing at the minute. I'll make it design it for maybe 3 mil radius, so it'll be 6 mil diameter. You can always scale it down afterwards. And so I'll just draw a shape that ends up looking like half of a stone. Now you notice I haven't actually closed my shape itself. I'm just going to place the four points for the side of the stone here and press enter to finish the command. Now this gives us the shape of half of a gemstone here. Now with the use of the revolve tool I can take the shape and I can spin it around its radius to create a circular shape based upon that half cross section. The revolve command can be found in the surface menu. If I want to actually access the hidden commands underneath this top menu here, just click and hold and let go with the left mouse button. Now I can go to the revolve command. It's easy enough to find. It labels itself if you leave your mouse over it for a second. And let's run that. The command prompt will tell us what to do next. Select the curves you want to revolve. We only want one, so I'll just press enter. My revolve axis will always be in the same view as my original half cross section. So I'll just find the top and bottom of the opening itself. Now it's going to ask me for the start and ending point for my re re revolution for the shape. I'm not going to bother with this, I'm just going to go straight to full circle in the command prompt and click on the word. And this will give me an instant basic gemstone shape. We could always refine this by doing some more specific uh, tweaks to the shape itself like resizing it or changing the edit points around over the line. But the basic gist of it is there. Once we have the stone, we'll actually go to the Layers menu. This is a little layer cake here. And we'll take the stone by selecting it, and then going to the layer color we want to move it to, and right-click with the right mouse button, and go to Change Object Layer. This will make my stone blue. Now that we have the gemstone made, we'll maneuver it into position on a ring. To know where it's supposed to sit on a ring, we'll need to create something called a ring rail, or a ring circle. Easiest way to do that is to make a simple circle. Now we might have some trick each time getting the center of the circle in the center of the grid here, but we can always use a shortcut that I always like to use in Rhino here, of typing in zero while my mouse is in the front view and press enter, and that'll give me a center of the circle at the origin. And now if I look up here, it's asking me whether I want to work with diameter or radius. I'm working with diameter. I can always toggle on the button here, the one in parentheses, and just switch it. So make sure I'm working with diameter, and we'll make ourselves a nice standard ring size here. I'll go for uh, 20 mil. Makes for a fairly large ring, but that should work just fine. Okay, so now that we have a 20 mil ring circle here, we can then take our gemstone here and move it up. Just hold down Shift. The grid snap will help you while I'm dragging. And I'll move it into position. Now this distance here between the ring circle and the bottom of the stone, the culet, if you will, should be at least half a millimeter. Now I can either change my grid snap settings by going to the grid snap button here and right clicking on it and going to settings. Or I could actually just use turn off the grid snap, snap itself entirely and just try and guesstimate it. It's probably better to use snap spacing. 
reduce this down to half a mil, and this will allow us to move it by smaller increments, in this case a half a mil. So we have a half a millimeter leeway there. Now the stone is looking a bit big right now, so I might actually size that down as well. The ideal for an eternity like this to have a stone that would be about, say, maybe two or three mil at most. So the stone tree roughly be half its size. So we use scale 3D. My origin point will be the bottom of the stone. My first reference point will be the top of the stone here, or directly above. And I'll bring it down until I get the size I want. That's looking about right. And there we are. So that gives us a more sensible stone size. Now that we have our stone shape and our ring rail shape, we need an additional cross section to determine the shape of the ring. We're going to use a command called one rail sweep, which requires one rail, we already have, and at least one cross section to determine the shape of it. Think extrude along a curve. So the best way to draw it would be in a view which is perpendicular to your original ring circle. I'll do it in the, the right ring, the right viewport here. You might want to make sure the project snap is on to ensure that your uh, shape you're drawing is going to stay flat and is not going to be snapped by any object snaps to anything three-dimensional. Okay, so I'll run the polyline again. And I'm going to draw a shape something like this. It's going to be a U-shape that holds in the stone. At any time we can fine tune it if need be, we can always go to edit points and we can make any specific adjustments. It's actually probably a good idea here. I'll grab these points and I'll maybe use control all on the arrow key to nudge them inwards a bit. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Bring down control and alt and then try the arrow keys. Now you want to be careful not to just press the arrow keys on their own. That will have an effect of actually moving the whole viewport, which you probably don't want to do. Okay, once we've done that, we can either right click on the edit points button or we can just press escape to make them go away. You might need to press escape a couple times. So now that we have this cross section, we can go ahead and run the sweep command. It's in the same place as the revolve command is, just, to, uh, just a few commands before. So I'll sweep one rail. My suggestion is make sure nothing is selected before you run this command. That way, Rhino doesn't get confused. Sweep one rail, select your rail. All I'm doing is following what says in the command prompt here. Select your cross-section curves. And it allows you to select more than one cross-section curve, but you don't need to. Simply press enter on that. Now you'll see an option menu come up, which shows you some additional options we can do to control our one rail sweep. These really aren't necessary at this point, but you can experiment with these if you like. Just press OK when done. And we have the shape of the ring itself but we only have one stone. So what we'll need to do next is we'll need to actually make some additional stones in here. The easiest way is that we'll use a command in the transform menu, which allows us to create multiple stones and multiple objects actually around the circle. It's called polar array, or array around polar coordinates. So I'll select the object. And if you have an object selected when you run a command, it will assume that's what you're running. Polar Array. Center of Polar Array will be right at the middle here. Now you'll notice I'm doing this in the front view. That's because I want to place my objects in a circle in the front viewport. It's going to lay them on the grid. Now in terms of the number of items, this is going to be trial and error, I'm afraid. There's no easy way of doing this. Ideally, if we're doing an eternity like this, which has a channel set in it, we we'll want about a tenth of a millimeter between stones. If we're doing other types of cloth settings, you can get away with a bit more. Just guesstimate maybe 20 to start with here. Press enter. The angle to fill, or first reference point. We're working with angle to fill here, so this should always be 360 degrees. You can just simply press enter to reuse that number. And then we'll take a look and see what happens. In this case, it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be. It's a bit wide, so I'll have to undo it and try it again. This time, place my center polar array at the center. And I'll use my number of items. Let's try maybe 26. Angle to fill, 360 degrees. All right, now in this case, that's too many. You can see because the stones are actually overlapping. So I'll undo it one more time. 
and I'll try one more. This time I'm actually a lot closer. I could actually save myself having to zoom in back and forth here by just using zero for my center puller, right? And I'll use 25 items now. And angle the puller 360. Much better. Now the distance there is very narrow, but we can determine it precisely by going up to analyze distance. And if your object snaps wrong, you can determine the distance. We'll try to add quad snap here between two points. Less than 0.1. <clears throat> so it's pushing it, but this would actually otherwise work. I could do it one less, but I think that's good enough. So there you have it. An eternity ring for a channel set. As you might have expected, there's a lot more to building an ET than just simply making the ring and the stones themselves. We can also, if we want to, decide to create back holes. We can either use the stones themselves, or we can create extra shapes to actually drill out the backs for the holes here. Alternatively, we can also open up and work on uh, using the same techniques for polar arraying and just building objects to build ourselves a uh, claw set eternity ring. For more information on our Rhino for Jewelry Design course, come to visit PulseAcademy.com.